Hi, you're watching Brioche Knit Tips. I'm Sandy from So I Make Stuff, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to steam block and measure a gauge swatch in brioche stitch. You can see here that I have finished my swatch and I've worked both the slip stitch selvage and the fade. And what I'm going to do is block this out. I've also woven in my ends and hid them. They're all coming out of the back of my work, but I haven't cut them yet because I like to do that after blocking. You're going to need some supplies for this. Um, I have these blocking mats and you can get these at a knitting store or sometimes you can get them at like Home Depot. And you're also going to need either pins. So I have regular pins, right? They're pins. Pins are pins. But I also have these um, knit blockers. This might be a little bit out of focus here, but these are from Knitter's Pride and they're actually just kind of combs and it's like a bunch of connected pins. So it's like a straight line of pins so that you can use them all at once. They go a little bit faster and so I think I'm going to be using these. They also have the advantage of providing a smoother edge because instead of pulling at one point a bunch of times, they're very closely spaced, so that's really convenient. To block something with steam, I prefer to use a steamer. I don't really know how to block with steam with an iron. Or maybe I should say, I know how it should be done, but the last time I did it, I made a hole in something. So I haven't done it since. That was about seven years ago. So I just prefer to use a steamer now. If you do want to use an iron, you can set it to steam and hover an inch above, but that's going to happen after we pin. So to begin pinning with something so small, I just like to stretch out a straight edge and see the general size. And when I'm using these combs, once it's stretched, I can just get an edge in place. But you do want to kind of get your corners, okay? and then start pinning your sides from there. That looks pretty good to me. Now, I have a portable steamer. Now, I'm being pretty thorough with this, but did you see how it kind of stretched and moved as I put the steamer over it and it got the hot steam? That's how blocking evens out your stitches. As you pass over it with the steam, everything kind of readjusts and slides around a little bit and it just makes things look a lot better. And it's still warm. What you want to do as you block is let it cool and let it dry. So if you had some drips coming out of your steamer or if you're working with an iron, you can get, you know, water dripping down. You want it to dry fully so that it doesn't spring back too much. So I'm going to let this dry and hopefully it will hold its shape and I'll be back in a little bit to show you how to measure this. Once my swatch was dry, I unpinned it and gave it some time to rest without the pins in. Now, your swatch will revert back a little bit, and if you don't give it enough time unpinned before you measure it, you won't get an accurate idea of what your gauge is. Once it sprung back a little bit, I decided to take it and feel the fabric. This is the most important part of the process of swatching, because if you don't like how your fabric feels in terms of drape and lightness, you're not going to like the final project. Once I've decided that I like the feel of my fabric, I'm going to trim my ends. Unless if you're working a project where you might be tight on yarn, you want to leave your strings hanging. That's a good idea if you're doing the Blooming Brioche Knit Along and you're only using one skein of each color because the yardage is kind of tight. 
In this project, I'm going to trim my ends because I'm going to keep this and use it as a coaster. So once I've done that, I'm going to flip it over and measure. You're going to need either a ruler or a gauge tool to measure how many stitches and rows are in four inches or 10 centimeters. I prefer the gauge tool, so I'll be using that. But if you were to use a ruler, you just place it over your knitting and count how many stitches there are in four inches. So with my gauge tool, I'm going to place it on top of the swatch and inside of this little window, I'm going to count how many of both the light and the dark stitch there are across. So both light and dark, there are 14. It's actually 13 and three quarters, but I'm rounding up to 14. And then I'm going to make sure that my gauge tool is positioned directly over a column of light stitches. And I'm going to count how many light stitches there are going up that little window. This time we're only counting the light, no dark. And there are 26. So that's my gauge, 14 stitches and 26 rows in my swatch. Thank you for watching this series of videos about the Brioche Fade Coaster or for following along with the Blooming Brioche Knit Along. I hope to see you back here at some point. There are plenty of knit tips videos that you can look at and get more info on how to knit. So I'll see you soon. Bye.